Hello learners, today we are going to talk about derivation of Gibbs phase rule in a graphical sense and its application in metamorphic rocks. In defining system, there are two more terms which are important and we will be using in our further discussion. One is called as components. In a chemical system, the components are chemical entities or they can be elements, they can be oxides, they can be anything, compounds. But important thing is that there is a minimum number attached to component. What is that minimum number? The minimum number which defines the system. However, the system may not be uniform, the system may be made up of many phases. The phase is the other term which we need to learn. Phase is any part of system which is physically and chemically homogeneous and is mechanically separable. So, the components are now those chemical entities which are minimum to define all the phases of the system. Now, as you know, a rock is made up of minerals. So, as a first approximation, we can consider that a mineral represent a phase or minerals are equivalent to phases. The components can be as I said earlier in terms of elements or oxides. Commonly, we refer to them oxide, it is only a convention, there is no hard and fast rule about it. So, common composition of the rocks of the on the surface of earth includes silicates. So, SiO2, Al2O3, CaO, MgO, Na2O etcetera can be some of the system components. Similarly, phases which are part of system as I explained earlier which are physically and chemically homogeneous and are mechanically separable, they are also made up of certain chemical elements and their chemistry can also be explained in terms of the components. For example, if it is potash feldspar whose formula is KAlSi3O8, it is made up of K2O, Al2O3, SiO2. Similarly, quartz the composition SiO2 and this one component phase. Similarly, silimonite which is made up of Al2 SiO5 can be broken down into two components Al2O3 and SiO2. So, there is an idea of phase component and system components. It is now time to understand how do we merge or manage these things or find out a relationship which allows us to link the idea of system, phases and components in terms of certain variables or change factors which lead to metamorphic rocks. If again you recall the definition of metamorphism, there there was a phrase that the conditions which are normally different from those occurring on the surface of earth. So, a rock gets transformed once when it is taken to conditions different from those occurring on the surface of earth which means that it is taken to a certain depth. Because of the geothermal gradient and because of the super incumbent pressure of the overlying rocks 10, 20 kilometers below, the pressure and temperature changes leading to change in the rock. So, pressure and temperature become two common factor which lead to changes in pre-existing rocks in solid state leading to metamorphic rocks. To understand how these changes occur and what is the role of pressure and temperature and whether we can define one relationship which can lead to a uniform rule 
let us look at a system which is made up of one component. It is a very common system in geological material which is defined by one component as Al2 SiO5. Now, Al2 SiO5 can be broken down into two components also Al2O3 and SiO2, but if all the phases have same composition, then we can also consider it as one component system because the definition of the component is minimum number of chemical entities which can define all the phases. Let us look at this diagram now. In this colorful diagram, there are three phases. Here it is kyanite as one phase, andalusite at another phase and sillimanite as the third phase. These three phases are polymorphs and polymorphs are those in which the composition is same, but the minerals are different. Let us look at three different situations which are marked as 1, 2 and 3. Now, in 1 the two axes which are pressure and temperature axis, if a rock has system represented by 1, then one can change pressure from 6 kilo bar to 8 kilo bar and change temperature from 400 degree centigrade to 500 degree centigrade, but the rock will only contain kyanite, which means that within this domain both pressure and temperature can be changed and there will be no change in the system defined by a kyanite bearing rock. So, therefore, in situation 1 we have 2 degree of freedom that is we can vary both the variables without changing the system and it is a one component system. And how many phases are present in this? Only one phase that is kyanite. So, if I write this in form an equation of this nature that is P plus F is equal to 2 plus c to relate the component degree of freedom and phases, then p can be replaced by 1 because there is only one phase, f can be replaced by 2 because there is 2 degree of freedom that is both pressure and temperature can be changed without affecting or changing the system and it is a one component rock. So, c will be 1. So, we have 2 as a degree of freedom phase as 1 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 and on this side we have C that is one component rock. So, to balance the reaction we have to make this 2 plus C. So, we can define the changes in the system or lack of changes in this system in area 1 by a relationship that is P plus F is equal to 2 plus C. Now, let us come to the point 2. Point 2 is represented by a point on the line. On this line, the blue colored phase represented by kyanite and the yellow colored phase represented by sillimanite both are present. So, therefore, at this point the number of phases are 2. Now, if I change the temperature from let us say 750 degree centigrade to 800 degree centigrade, the two phases will not be there. That is the rock will move in the domain of sillimanite. So, therefore, the rock will change. If I would like the rock not to change then at 800 degree centigrade, I will have to simultaneously change the increase the pressure to 10 kilo bar. What it means that at point 2 one can change one variable and the other variable has to be dependent upon that. So, therefore, one 
of the variable is dependent and the other variable is independent. The degree of freedom here is 1 and not 2. Now, let us examine this in similar fashion to this equation. The number of phases are 2, degree of freedom is 1. So, this is 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. As you know component is 1, so this remains 2 plus c. So, what we see that the relationship that is phases plus degree of freedom is equal to 2 plus number of component are valid for position A and position 2. Let us look at a third situation. Now, third situation is represented by 3 where it is a point and at this point the 3 colored phases that is kyanite, sillimanite and andalusite are all present. So, P is equal to 3. Can we change any of the variable that is pressure and temperature so that the system does not changes? You will see that no. If we change any of the variable either pressure or temperature, the system will get disturbed or will get changed. So, therefore, there is no degree of freedom. So, for point 3, we have a relationship where there are 3 phases and f is equal to 0. Let us again examine the same equation 3 that is number of phases 0 that is 0 degree of freedom is equal to 2 plus 1 because number of components have not changed. So, there also this relationship holds good. So, what do we see that this relationship that is P plus F is equal to 2 plus C that is number of phases plus the degree of freedom is equal to 2 plus number of component is valid throughout the different positions in this diagram. Learners, this is known as Gibbs phase rule and it provides us a very powerful tool to examine transformations in metamorphic rocks. This Gibbs phase rule which we saw validated graphically in this diagram allows us to know that in a defined set of component how many phases will be there when there is 2 degree of freedom, 1 degree of freedom or no degree of freedom. It allows us to interpret the metamorphic rocks whether they represented a divariant that is 2 degree of freedom, a univariant that is 1 degree of freedom or invariant that is no degree or 0 degree of freedom. It is also interesting if you look at this diagram that the, area, the one situation represents an area. So, divariance is associated with an area. 2 which represents univariance is represented by a geometric figure of a line. So, univariant is a line and 3 that is invariance is represented by a point. So, the three situations which we see that of divariance, univariance and invariance are also geometrically compatible with area, line and point. We will be using this and the relationship P plus F is equal to 2 plus C that is Gibbs phase rule in the study of metamorphic rocks because this provides us as I said the tool to understand transformation compared to the tools, different tools which are available for the study of metamorphic and sedimentary rocks. Let us now just have an idea and calculate that if it is a three component system, then for divariance that is area situation how many number of phases will be there. So, let us look at this equation the number of components now are 3. So, this becomes 3 plus 2 5 
and the number of phases we do not know, we want to calculate. The degree of freedom is 2. So, if it is P that is unknown number of phases or equivalent to mineral are unknown plus degree of freedom is 2, then 2 P plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 3 which will tell us that for a degree of freedom of 2 the number of phases will be equal to the number of component. If there are 5 components there will be 5 number of phases, if there are 3 components there will be 3 number of phases. If it is a univariant situation in a 3 component system, so this becomes 3, C becomes 3, C plus 2 is now 5, it is a univariant situation which means that the degree of freedom is 1, then the number of phases will be P plus 1 is equal to 5 which means P is equal to 4. So, for in a 3 component system at univariance the number of phases will be 4 and similarly for an invariant situation where f is equal to 0 for a 3 component system the number of phases will be 5. So, if conversely we are examining a rock which we can define in terms of 3 components and we find 5 phases together, then we can say that this rock is specifying a specific pressure and temperature. If we find 4, that will tell us that it is specifying a univariant reaction and if we find 3 in a 3 component system we will know that we are or the rock represents a range of pressure and temperature. So, is the pressure and temperature only variable or are these two the only variables? No. In nature, there are other things which also control the metamorphic transformation and formation either of new minerals or of change of composition. So, these which we used as defining a degree of freedom, there can be several degree of freedom, but the most important are pressure and temperature. There are 7 degree of freedom which can be considered that is pressure, temperature, the amount of water present in the system because that is represented by the partial pressure of water P H 2 O. Similarly, the amount of other volatile which is commonly carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that is P C O 2 that can also control what transformation or what mineral will form. The P H and the E H also can lead to this transformation, but in rock transformation or in metamorphic rocks they are not very significant. There is one more factor, the seventh factor of oxygen fugacity which also controls, but the most important of these are pressure and temperature because as we change in position of a rock from surface of earth to deeper levels, the major differences in condition are reflected in terms of pressure and temperature. Dear learners, in the next part of this program, we will learn about how this composition is reflected in space as the metamorphic rocks change without changing or acquiring composition from outside that is in a closed system. Thank you.